Surely, 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 there is no intent against me. Yeah, not even that. 
promise says, say, he say, he's the Alpha Amen. and Omega. It's the beginning Amen. and the end. Amen. Through all the trials Amen. and tribulation, the orange God gets his people to as we're going to worship the Lord. He deserves the honor. He deserves the glory. He's the reason we're standing in this place. He's the reason we left our problems at home and we came here to worship. He deserves the worship. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. There's no one like him. There is no one like him. There is no mother like him. There is no father like him. We 
welcome him into our midst, into our presence. We need him. He's the only thing we need. He's the reason you woke up this morning. He's the reason you're in this place. He's the reason you came into his house. We welcome you, O oh Lord. We welcome you in this place. We are very broken, we are broken vessels. We need you. We need your glory. We need your grace. We need your favor on our lives. You're the reason we are here. You're the reason, oh Lord. Come and heal us. Come and heal our wounds. Come and fix our marriages. Come and fix our studies. Come and fix our relationships. It's you that we need, oh Lord Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, for there is none like you. You deserve it all. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you into this church. May you come and heal. May you come and flow. Come and overflow in this place. We welcome you, oh Lord. You're welcome. You're welcome into this church, into these broken vessels. They need you, oh Lord. We are nothing without you, oh Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you into this place. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome, Jesus. We call upon you, Jesus. Come and flow. Come and overflow. We call you spirit, come into this place. We welcome you into these broken vessels for you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You desire to abide in our praises. We welcome you, Jesus. Come and overflow. Come and sit in our hearts because it's only you that we need. It's you we call upon, oh Jesus.
It's your welcome in this place. This is your This is your gonna make it personal you're going to say that Jesus I'm your house because you're the house it's not the building but you're the temple of God so you're gonna sing and say that I am your house Lord I'm your house let us sing your Lord, I'm your house, your home. I welcome you today. Sing it again. Lord, I'm your house. With your hands raised in the air, sing it. I welcome you in my body. Lord, I'm your For I'm your house. Your I'm your home. I welcome you today. Yes, we are so blessed, Lord, that you've made us your house that you've made us more than what we know or what we can see. You call us vessels. Father, here we are saying that you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in us. You're welcome in everything that is going to take place in this place, Lord. For we are the temples. We are so grateful and blessed to be called the vessels of the living God. That is what you see in us. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Not only today, but forever. Even tomorrow, you're welcome. Even the future, you're welcome. You're, the, you're our house, Lord. In you, we are safe. In you, we know that we have a future. In you, we know that tomorrow, is safe. You're welcome. You're welcome. Spirit of the living God, you're welcome. Jesus, you're welcome. Today, you're welcome. I'm your
Yes, we say amen. Because when we pray and confess that, Father, you're welcome, we believe that you are in this place. We are so grateful this morning that you've come. Hallelujah. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Stand up on your feet, everyone. Yes, we have to honor the presence of the Almighty God, especially my boys and girls. Please, when we come to church, let's be mindful of whatever that we are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you're still young and you have the energy. So when we are standing, you're supposed to stand. Hallelujah. Yes. Never let the devil snatch this time that we have in the presence of the Lord. It is so little. So use it wisely. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the devil know that we are in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you're welcome to Cornerstone Christian Fellowship. We are so grateful that you've come this morning to worship with us. May the almighty God bless you so much. Amen. Yes, the Lord loves us so much that he has brought us this far to the 18th date of February 2024. Let us clap for him. <laughs> Father, we are so grateful for this day. We don't take it for granted, but it is because of your grace that we are still standing and saved. It is by the grace of God that we've made it and today. Many people have died, but we are so grateful unto the Lord for his love that he has kept us alive up to this date. Amen. 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 Yes, you can have a seat as you greet your neighbor. Don't leave, don't sit near a neighbor and you don't greet that person. You may be greeting the president of tomorrow. Eh? Amen. Yes, we are so glad that our pastors in, are in the house. We have Pastor Mawanda, our dear father. We are so grateful unto the Lord that you've come this very morning. Pastor lives far away from Kampala. He lives in... in uh, where, where you're getting But he has made it to the morning service. Let us appreciate God for him. And we also have our dear pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Fred Kasule. He's also in the house. He's the man behind the vision. So we are so grateful to the Lord that he is here this morning. Amen. 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 And let us appreciate the wonderful choir that has, uh, that has led us so wonderfully this morning. May the almighty God bless you so much and take you to far places. Amen. Yes, we believe it, that we are going far and far. So you better join us before. Uh -huh. Yes, you can come and join us, especially youths. Let us serve God in our useful days. Because time is going and you have to give an account to, on how you spend your time. Youths, be mindful. Amen. Amen. And these are our special announcements or special good news. Today evening, we are going to have the Men Net Fellowship in this place. Men. And when we say men, don't be there when you're 18 and you say, ah, ah, it's for men. You're already a man. It is not only for the marriage, but men. Hallelujah. So if you believe that you're a man, show us that you're a man. Come to these services. Come and learn more. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't leave it for the 35 and 50s, even the 18, 18s. Amen. Amen. So, men, come back this evening from 5 to 7. Hallelujah. My sister here is having a hot testimony and it can't wait. So let us listen to her. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm happy for today. Yeah. Do you know why? Yes. Today is my birthday. Hey. 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 You people. I thank nah. Lord for today. 18th of February. Today is my, my birthday. See how far the Lord has brought me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless the Lord. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Betina. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. where the Lord has brought us. It's not by might, not by power, but by the grace of God. And we believe that the Lord is going to give you more and more. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and some cake. Debbie? Very soon. Yes, we know that tomorrow we have a cake. So, if you want to be part of that cake, better come in the practices. Amen. Amen. Yes, there's going to be a brief meeting for all men after this service. So if you're a man, please remain behind for some minutes. Your leader wants to talk to you on what is going to happen in the evening. So spare some time, like five minutes, and meet him. Amen? Amen. And Amen. our monthly overnight is going to be this very Friday, the 23rd of Feb. Let us clap for that in Jesus' name. Yes, we always have one night in a month, and it is a Friday. For all those Fridays in a month, the three you can't sleep, but this one, spare it for God. Let us come in the night and be in the presence of the Almighty. It starts at 9 after the prayer altar to 4 a.m. Please invite someone. Don't come alone. Amen. Amen. And the uh, youths will have their youth net fellowship next Sunday. That will be the 25th of Feb. Youths, we are going to have a service on the Sunday. So please, youths, note that, that this very Sunday, the next Sunday, is going to be our service. Come, let us praise let us hear the word of God. Let us seek God as the youths because we need the Lord so much. Amen. Amen. Yes, I know you're so cold, but the Lord loves us so much. Remember, we are in the love month. Tell your neighbor, I love you. Say unto your neighbor, I love you. In the name of Jesus, yeah. <laughs> My babies, tell your neighbor, I love you so much. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Not just like yes. That. <laughs> For the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only son. Amen. That is why we are here this morning, because of love. So in everything that you do, remember to love. Amen. Yes, you can stand up on your feet. Remember that, um, that men are here this evening from 5 to 7. We are going to have an overnight on Friday from 9 to 4. And we, on that very day, we are going to have the prayer altar from 5 to 7. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us worship the Lord in one song as we welcome the pastor. Be blessed. And patience, eh? Yeah. Hallelujah. May we prepare our hearts as we are going to worship the Lord once again. We thank Him for He has brought us into this place. Amen. We should never get tired of thanking the Lord. He has fought so many battles, He has loved us. He has been there for us throughout every situation that we face. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. We 
lift our voices. We raise our voices. We honor him. Oh, we give him glory. if you love God and just declare that Father I thank you for loving me and I declare my love for you this morning yes, Lord. leave those hands as a, as a sign of your total surrender to him Father we bless your name Father we thank you so much for the gift of life and thank you for the, 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 the thoughts you have for each one of us my Father we thank you for your plan of being with us for eternity through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus laying down his life to lift our lives. 
We bless your name, O oh God. We magnify your holy name. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name, Jesus, Lamb of God. There is no one like you, O the King of Kings. We worship you, Father. Just be thankful to the thankful to God for His love, for His unconditional love. Thank you, Lord. He has promised that if you love me, I and my Father will come and dwell in you. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your name, O God of glory. We worship you, Jesus. Just be thankful to God for his grace and for his love for your life. Worship you, Jesus, Lamb of God. We glorify your name, O God of glory. you Jesus we magnify your holy name we honor you Jesus Lamb of God there's a chorus a song that I believe you know which says that I love you Lord you have never failed me mercy is running after me just know that whatever you're going through God is still pursuing you it doesn't matter whether you are like Jonah you know where you are disobeying God but the love of God pursued Jonah to the bottom of the sea Amen. that is the kind of love that is pursuing you regardless of where you are it doesn't matter how you feel about you yesterday his love will pursue you to the bottom of the sea. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. I love you, Lord. For your mercies never fail. you Lord I love you
voices all my life. Voices all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I will, I will sing, sing of the goodness of God. One more time, lift up your hands and say, I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I, will I will sing, sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, Father God. We bless your name. We thank you for loving us, Almighty God. And we declare that we love you, O Lord God, in the name of of Jesus. We will sing of the goodness of the Lord the rest of our days on earth and in eternity. We bless your name almighty God. We thank you Father that you are pursuing us with your love in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and give God a mighty hand of praise everybody. One more time clap your hands unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please, one more time, turn to your neighbor and tell him or her that God loves you, but he loves me more. Tell the second one that God loves you, but he loves me more. If you believe that he loves you the most, clap your hands unto him. Amen. Amen. Let us appreciate the youth team. Thank you so much for leading us. Clap your hands to the Lord for them as they take their seats in Jesus name Amen, please get, uh, take your seats, thank you so much for coming this morning 
to worship the Lord. How many of you have come to worship? You have come to worship him. Amen. We thank God that all of us are alive today. In Jesus' name. Amen. A few things I'd love to uh, announce this morning before we go in the word. We did have a meeting yesterday with uh, our, uh, our uh, police commander and the LC chairman and all the councillors in the area and they were talking about the security concern in this place sorry in the in the area okay and I also know that Mrs. Opio sergeant CID she was talking with the ushers this Monday about security issues in this place so beyond 11 p.m. if anyone is found walking by themselves they're going to be arrested okay and we've had incidents here where a member of our church was arrested and another member was arrested from another, another church and I think that they spent a night in the cell so please beyond 11 p.m. make sure that you are at home amen I said amen and if you're coming from church I want you to know don't walk alone walk in pairs and unless you are a thief and you know that when you see the foot patrol don't run okay because when they see you running away from them they will suspect that you are a thief and they have a list of people that are now unconscious in in the hospitals because of the thieves that stole from them and then they clubbed their heads with sticks that had nails in them amen so be conscious of your own security kids don't walk alone even during that day if possible are you listening to me if you're listening say amen. amen all right let us read the book of john chapter 14 verse 15 that's our theme verse if you love me i thought someone was going to complete the sentence let us all read one go if you love me you will obey my commandments we are looking at this word love because love is the most powerful force on the earth we are created to love and to be loved nobody prays lord i pray that everybody will reject me because all of us were created to love and to be loved the power of love goes beyond barriers it goes beyond tribes it goes beyond color it goes beyond nationality that's why you can find the darkest girl marrying the whitest white because love breaks the barrier of color and that's why you find someone born in Karamoja married to a, a, someone in Chigezi. Why? Because love breaks tribal barriers. And so my passion is that all of us will understand the true meaning of love. Because many people have been heartbroken. Some have even committed suicide because they misunderstood the issue of love marriages break because of lack of love love issues relationships break because of love issues and until you find your identity in God's love for you you're going to be manipulated by people that say I love you and yet they do not love you as a person they love what you have first corinthians 13 verse 13 first corinthians 13 and verse 13 and now these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest is love are you listening to me these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest is love when you take time to read the whole chapter you're going to find out that doesn't matter how much I prophesy 
how much I preach, how much I sing, how many churches I build, if I am deficient of love, I am like a noisy, empty tin. Because the whole of heaven is on the foundation of love. God doesn't have love. God is love. What is love? There's a definition here that I liked about love. Love is dethroning self and elevating another. Love is when you dethrone yourself. You put down yourself. You lay down your own life to elevate another. Humanly speaking, many of us, we love the quality someone has instead of loving them regardless of their qualities. Humanly speaking, we love people that behave well toward us. We always respond with love to people that love us. That is the human person. You can love somebody's characteristic, somebody's height, somebody's size, and yet you never loved them as people. So if you want to understand what true love is, we have to go back to the one who doesn't have love, but who is love itself, going back to the word of God. It's the only way you'll ever understand the true meaning of love. You can't understand true love because of what someone says to you or because of what someone gives to you. Someone can say, I love you because they want something from you. So if you want to understand true love, we have to go back to God. Someone shout love. One more time, shout love. Did you know that doesn't matter how much you love each other, you can never change each other? People have made mistakes. Thinking that, well, I'm going to marry so and so, she or he is not saved, but as soon as we are married, I am determined I'm going to change her, I'm going to change him. Lovers cannot change each other, but love can change lovers. So if you're married and you've been striving to change your partner to be like you, you can't do it. Just love them the way they are. When somebody not says that you love them unconditionally, love transforms. Love changes. You know why? That's why when we tap into the love of God, it doesn't matter who you are. You may be a murderer and you become a man of God. You may be a prostitute but once you tap in the love of God, you can become an evangelist because love transforms. So love people the way they are and allow the power of love to transform them. If you're hearing me, say amen. One more time, say amen. True love doesn't have fear. Nobody ever says that I love you you live fear free. You cannot fear the one that you know loves you. Do you know that even dogs know those that love them? No? Even a dog can sense if you love it or if you hate it. Even dogs will gravitate toward people that love them. Are you listening to me? So if a dog can respond to love, Anybody can respond to love. Or well, someone say amen. First John 4.18. First John 4.18. What does it say? There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Fear is defined as distrust. Anyone you fear, you fear them because you don't trust them. Fear is distrust. 
If I know that you love me, I'll trust you. So if you walk in fear of somebody, chances are you are not trusting them. Are you listening to me? Have you ever seen a baby who doesn't even talk? Who doesn't even know your name? Find them in the hands of their loving mothers and they hand them to you as a stranger. What is going to happen? They are going to cry. Even babies know who love them. But when they get used to you and they know that you are, that you, you are not going to pinch them, they will begin to smile at you. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? One of the reasons why some people fear God is because they don't, they don't, they don't trust him. You know the story in the book of Genesis when Adam and, and, and Eve sinned against God, what happened? They ran away in hiding. God comes and he says, Adam, where are you? Oh, we are fearful. Why? Because we are naked. What had happened was something had stood between Adam and Eve and God. When sin stands between you and God, love will not be operational in your life. Are you listening to me? So if you're walking in any kind of fear, that is proof there's no love in between there. Are you listening to me? True love always wants to give. Listen to this. John chapter 3 verse 16, all of us know that scripture very well. For God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave. Now these are common things that we all must know and remind ourselves of continually. Because if, if you don't understand that, love, that God loves you the way you are, you may be even a witch seated here with a talisman in your waist. But God loves you with your talisman. He doesn't love that talisman that, you're, that, that, you are, that, that you've put around your waist. But he loves you regardless of your talisman. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? You may even be a murderer. You killed somebody yesterday. Huh? And you know where you buried them. In spite of what you did, God still loves you. Are you listening to me? So true love will always give. Love will always want to contribute to the needs of other people. So from today, I want that if anybody ever says, I love you, don't simply take them at their words. Watch the way they treat you. If they're always taking from you, they're not loving you. So true love is defined by your willingness to always contribute to the needs of other people. Don't love to be given. Love to give. Are you listening to me? Love is an investment of time, effort, and even finances. Everybody that you love you have to invest in them. Invest your time, invest your effort, invest your finances in the ones that you love. So if you ever say, I love somebody, always anticipate their needs and be willing to contribute. Luke 19, verse 9 to verse 10, it talks about a very rich man by the name of Zacchaeus. Can you all read? So he said to, to him, Today salvation has come to your house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that, what, what, to save that which was lost. So Jesus comes, he looks at the tree and he sees a man by the name of Zacchaeus. You know the story. Are you listening to me? What happened? When he saw him, he did not simply bypass him. Because of Jesus' love for people individually, he took time. 
he may not have left wherever he was coming from to meet this man Zacchaeus but when he saw the passion of Zacchaeus to see Jesus he stopped under the tree straight away told him that today I'm going to be in your house now that is love he looked at him in the tree and he knew this man has need of me so I'm going to cast all my plans and spend time with him now that is true love he didn't love Zacchaeus because he was a righteous man he was a preacher Zacchaeus was a tax collector he was an enemy of God's people he could have been a corrupt man but Jesus saw him and he saw his need are you listening to me everybody's needy everybody needs love let me see your hands how many of you want to be loved all of us so if we want to be loved we want we want people to invest in us why shouldn't we be the example of what true love is if you know how a true lover should treat you do it first before they did do it for you are you listening to me if you're not listening say amen all right john chapter 4 verse 10 jesus is on his way to some place and then he sat at the well and a woman who had a bad history comes to fetch water now you know all these stories amen let us read jesus answered her if you knew the gift of god and what it what it is that asks you for a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living waters you know that story the woman had had broken marriages one after another she has a man in the house who was and has so she has nothing to boast about she's a broken woman are you listening to me and that's why she came alone to the world because everybody in the city hated her because of her bad lifestyle but as she comes to the well jesus the love of all men and women was waiting and he engaged her in a conversation you know the story he asks her for a drink and then she brings these excuses and that's why he's telling her if you knew the gift of god if you knew the one who's asking you for water you would have asked him for living waters are you listening to me jesus knew the need of this woman a broken heart she needed healing she needed someone that could speak with her she needed someone that could understand her pain and when she discovered that jesus loved her regardless of what was at home and regardless of what was known about her her heart opened her heart opened transformation happened and she became an, an evangelist straight away and she brought the whole city to jesus come and see the man that told me everything that I ever did most people would not want to associate with bad people is that true is that true if you know the most worst or if you, you if you know anybody in the community whose character is the worst huh? humanly speaking you're going to avoid him or her is that true is that true not good not good as a matter of fact jesus was always accused that he was a friend of sinners are you listening to me i may not associate with you because of your character but i will still love you in spite of your character that is the true love that is called the agape love love somebody regardless of tribe regardless of their conduct regardless of what they say against your life and once you walk in that true love of god god will bless your life or somebody say a big amen, amen. ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8 as you walk in love always expect 
God to reward you as you walk in love. What does it say? Because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he's free or a slave. In other words, walk in love. Love the people that criticize you. Love the people that betray you. Love the people that take advantage of you. I'm not saying that open your heart. Don't allow your heart to be like a playground. Don't allow anybody to simply walk through your heart. Guard your heart as much as you can. Are you listening to me? Because the truth is, much of our pain in life is caused by someone. Think about the pain you've gone through or that you may be going through right now. It has been caused by someone. Are you listening to me? And that's why it's very, very important for you to select your friends carefully. Love everybody, but only bring into your heart people that uphold the values that you uphold. I'm talking about people that believe what you believe. Someone say amen. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to remind you of the scripture. Verse, let us read from verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3. Okay. Now Paul has been making a prayer for the believers and this is part of it. So that your heart may dwell, sorry, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. This was a prayer of Paul for believers. Are you listening to me? I mean, we make all sorts of prayers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Lord, give me a husband. Lord, give me a wife. Lord, give me a, 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 a Mercedes Benz. Lord, give me all those things have nothing wrong with them. But as you look at the kind of prayer that, that Paul prays for us, he said that I pray that you are rooted and grounded in love. Because anybody who is rooted in true love, it doesn't matter what you do against them, they will excel in life. If someone is rooted and grounded in love, it doesn't matter how big a storm that comes their way, every storm is going to take them higher. Why? They have a strong foundation. They are deeply rooted in love. So last time we talked about the dimensions of love. Give us the next verse. And that you may have power together with all the saints. In other words, love is linked to power. Okay? So that you may grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of Christ is. Now we're looking at the dimensions of love here. Love has dimensions. In our devotions uh, this mo uh, Wednesday morning with the, uh, uh, the school population, we had an, we had an interesting um, situation. I called two kids from every class, P7 to P5, and then I called four teachers to come, and the question was, what is love? That was the question. And when I went back home, my wife was watching on, um, uh, um, I mean, she was watch, watching on, on the platform, and she was laughing and she was saying, it looks like the children know more about love than the adults. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Little kids, you are explaining or defining what, how, the way they understand love. So love knows no boundaries regarding age. Whether you are, you, are, you are newly born or you are 20 years like my daughter Bettina. <laughs> Amen. Regardless of age, love breaks barriers of age. Are you listening to me? But most of what they said was love is a strange feeling you have for somebody. 
kids to are saying this. And then some teachers, trained as teachers, most of them will say the same thing. Love is a strange feeling you have towards somebody. Now, true love may, man, may manifest as a feeling, but that is wrong. If we bring love to the level of a feeling, have you ever woken up from your bed and you felt low? You didn't want to talk? Somebody came to greet you and you didn't want to hear anybody greeting you? Ever felt that way? And sometimes you wake up and you are on the sky. You want to shout hallelujah to everybody. You want to give away all the money you have in your pocket. Are you listening to me? Love cannot be like feelings. Because one day you are up, another day you are down. Somebody comes and he commends the type of hair you made today. I love your hair. Where did you go to make it? And all of a sudden you feel like you're in the sky. Listen to me. You're walking on somewhere and say, well, where did you get that shoe? Wow, I've never seen that type of shoe. It doesn't matter how much you bought that shoe. But because of what you have heard somebody say about your shoe, you'll feel great and you say, oh, praise the Lord. Your feelings will go high. What if somebody came and told you, where did you get that shoe? Huh? Where? I last saw that type of shoe worn by my grandfather that died 20 years ago. How are you going to feel? You feel like putting off your shoe and beating him first or her and then throw it away. Your feelings are going to go down. So true love is a choice. It's not what you feel. God chose to love you. Are you listening to me? So when it comes to love, choose to love somebody. Not because of their hairstyle, not because of the level of education, not because they are tall or short. Love is a choice. I choose to love you the way you are. That is true love. Are you listening to me? I choose to love you regardless of what I know about you. Secondly, love is a commitment. Once I've chosen to love you, you can never say anything or do anything against me that will make me stop loving you. But humanly speaking, the way people behave may affect the way we love them, not God. I said not God. God loves you the way you are. God loves you as an individual. We are so many today in the church and others are online, but the Bible talks about how God can leave the 99 righteous people and go after one. Did you read that? Do you know that that scripture is in the Bible? God can leave 99 and pursue you as a person. So God loves you as an individual. So if you ever feel like I'm worthless, I am lonely, always remind yourself, but God loves me the way I am. Or someone say amen. The third dimension of love is sacrifice. You cannot truly say I love somebody if you're not willing to sacrifice for them. Love is always looking for someone else's need. I was reading a story many, many years ago. A young boy from a very poor family was selling milk on the village. And as he's selling milk, he's hungry, he's thirsty, but the boy could not take a cup of milk for himself because the parents commanded him, sell that milk, bring the money, for you to go to school and take care of the family. So the boy was always walking from door to door selling milk. And one day the boy knocked on a door and a woman came out. The boy told her, Mom, I'm selling milk. Would you like a cup of milk? The woman looked at the boy. The boy was hungry. The boy was thirsty. The boy was all sweating. So the woman reached her pocket, bought 
a big mug of milk from the boy and he told the boy I give you this milk drink it from here are you listening to me first time to see the boy the boy took a mug of milk he was now feeling better and he went on to sell milk and the boy was in school he was very hard working in school after so many years the boy is now a medical doctor in a big hospital and as the boy is doing a checking on the patients in this hospital she notices the address of a woman who was coming from his village and then was interested who is this woman that comes from my village she went on to check the records and she found it was the woman that bought him when he was young a mug of milk but now the woman had been so sick and the medical bill was so big the woman could not pay you know what happened this boy went to the treasury of the hospital and she told them I am going to foot the bill of that woman <laughs> oh praise the Lord do you know the lesson behind that it was a simple mug of milk the woman invested in the boy that took care of her bill many years later and that's why I'm saying that true love is investing true love is always giving you may simply look at you giving somebody a mug of milk well that is nothing I can afford that but God can make a mug of milk years later pay a bill you could not afford are you listening to me and that's I want to encourage you first and foremost know that God loves me the way I am he does not love me because I perform many times you love people because they perform I was sharing a testimony a few weeks ago here how one of our daughters was the best at her university where she was in Cyprus top student but when we were talking with her on phone she was crying and the reason she was crying was, I think I shared this, when she was at the Gayaza school, for some reason her performance dropped. All of us were worried, all of us were concerned. They called us one day, they told us, sign this letter, that if she fails this term, we are going to excommunicate her from our school. All of us were concerned, school is concerned, she's concerned, but the reason she was crying when she was calling us a few weeks ago she was saying that mom and dad when i was failing my exams it wasn't me alone there were other students in the class who were also failing but when their parents came to speak to them at school their parents were shouting at their kids they were angry publicly ashaming their own children before the teachers because they're not performing and she was saying that as for you nobody raised a voice nobody condemned me nobody ashamed me you simply encouraged me and said let us trust God he's going to do it or oh, clap your hands unto the Lord so what I'm trying to say is don't love people because they perform don't love people because they sing because they preach love people regardless of their performance and you're going to see God bless you he may not even bless you next week but like the boy who was given a mug of milk God may bless you 20 years ahead from today because love is an investment oh hallelujah let me finish by saying if there is any issue between you and anyone especially in your family Walk, work on reconciliation. It doesn't matter what they did or said in your life. Be the first one to work on reconciliation. 
where they are going to think, I am weak because I'm born again. Let them feel whatever they want to feel. We are not feelers. We are people of faith. You build the bridge. I'm saying this because I know that love, genuine love, will bring healing in your own heart. Genuine love will transform the one who has caused the most pain in your life. If you're in a fellowship like this one, and there is somebody that has taken advantage of you, build a bridge of reconciliation and watch how God is going to pay you up. Are you listening to me? If you're listening to me, say amen. Love is a sacrifice. Many of us do not understand the language of sacrifice. But if you want to get the full picture of what true love is, have a picture of Jesus Christ hanging at Calvary, naked. He was spat at by people. When they put Jesus Christ and a murderer before the whole city, and they said, choose who should we release? The whole city said, let Barabbas, the murderer, the child molester, be set free. Let this innocent man, well, they didn't say innocent, let that man be crucified. And so he's hanging publicly at Calvary. Now, there is no better picture of what true love is than when you begin to look at Jesus hanging naked at the cross. And as he's dying, he makes a prayer. Lord, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Humanly speaking, can someone get nails and a hammer and stick your palm, the palm of your hand on a tree and he doesn't know what they are doing? Jesus knew that true love will forgive are you listening to me? Whether you denied him like Peter, when he meets with you, he wants you back. Whether you are a Jonah, you have run away from your mission, when God meets you, he wants you back. So true love will forgive. Who has broken your heart? Or who has broken the heart of the one that you love? Because sometimes we are angry, not because people have hurt us, but because they have hurt people that we love. So as we talk about the issue of love, love is a choice. Love is a commitment. Love is a sacrifice. Love forgives. If we can understand these dimensions of love, we can bear and handle any pain anybody can ever bring to us. Why? Because love is medicine. Inflict pain on my heart. I love you and the power of love will heal my wounds. Will somebody say amen? Let us stand up on our feet. And I just want us to know that the love of God for your life is unconditional. Lift those, those hands before the Lord and just tell him that Lord, I love you because you love me. Just re re say that repeatedly. Because God is saying, I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. I want my love to transform you. And I want to pour my love into your heart. That you will, you will love those that have caused pain in your life. And you're going to watch that same love that transformed you. Transforming those that are causing pain in your life. All of us, we are transformed by the love of God. And if we can apply the same love to other people, the same love is going to transform them. The hardest criminal will melt when they sense that you love them regardless of what they are doing. The love of Jesus that transformed us is a testimony that when you love others unconditionally that love is going to transform them 
love love is the greatest of all father i pray in the name of jesus only you know what is going on in our hearts lord you know of people in here whose hearts have been broken by those that say they loved them you know some people here my father whose lives have been shattered because the people who should have been there for them people who should have been their protection have mistreated them have betrayed them they have publicly ashamed them but i pray that your love will heal wounded hearts i pray that your love will heal broken relationships in marriages i pray that your love will heal bitterness and resentment that some people carry i pray that your love will heal the guilt and the condemnation that some people carry help us to understand the dimensions of your love how wide how long how high and how deep your love is it was your love that raised jonah from the bottom of the sea it was your love that brought peter after denying you three times it was love that made the father welcome the prodigal son after many years it was your love jesus that stopped for zacchaeus it was your love that was waiting for the samaritan woman at the well i pray for everyone in this place and those online who may feel lonely who may feel unlovable who have been judged because of their performance who have been judged because of their tribes who have been judged because of their failures i pray that your love will come like a storm and lift them up in the name of jesus i pray for struggling marriages oh god let your love bring healing i pray for children that are struggling in their relationships with their parents with their siblings i pray for children who have been abandoned by their fathers i pray for children that have been taken advantage of by other siblings i pray that your love will come like healing in their lives oh god and as you love us give us the enabling grace to love others unconditionally oh god we worship you we magnify your holy name jesus everybody open your mouth and just begin to say words of love to jesus just tell him lord i love you because you are my god lord i love you because you love me lord i love you because you are my creator Lord, I love you because you are a God of grace. You are a God of comfort. Say words about love. Lord God, I love you because you have a plan for my life. Lord, I love you because your grace is amazing over my life. In the name of Jesus, just want you to know that the love of God surrounds you like a wall that the enemy will never jump over. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, let every tear be like a prayer from the life of this young lady. Let your love give her a revelation of the blessing that lies ahead of, your, ahead of her life before the end of this year. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill her afresh. Every door the enemy has been taking advantage of the love of God permanently closes those doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we love you. Father God, we magnify your holy name. Everybody say words about God, about his character, about who he is to you. He's my lover. He's my savior. He's my redeemer. He's the healer of my life. He's the one that lifts me. It doesn't matter where I am. He's still a lifter of men. He's a healer. He's a savior. He's a giver. He's a giver. He's a giver. He's a healer. And you know what? Before we finalize, 
He wants to love others through you. He wants to pour his love in your heart that you may love people around you for him. He wants to put words of hope on your tongue that people will hear words of encouragement when you open your mouth, non criticisms. He wants to use your hands to strengthen the weak, to heal the sick, to build for the homeless. He wants to use your feet to go after the lost. He wants to use your talent. He wants to use your time. He wants to use your money to establish a kingdom. And whatever you invest for God goes ahead of you into eternity. Father, we bless your name and we thank you because you are so good. You are so good, oh God. Thank you, Lord God. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. My God is good. Oh, my God is good. My God is good. He's so good to me. Hallelujah. He's a mighty lover. He's a mighty lover, declare. He's a mighty lover, mighty. Oh, hallelujah. Katonda Murunji. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are so good. And help us to never forget. We bless your name and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us give God a mighty hand of praise, everyone. One more time, clap, 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 clap unto Jesus. Amen. Someone shout amen. 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 Let us give our offerings to the Lord this morning. Amen. If God has been good to you and God has blessed you financially, we give him of our time, we give him of our finances, we give him of our, of our abilities. When we tithe, when we give, when we build, we are saying, Lord, we love you because you have provided for us. If you want an envelope, you lift up your hand, and they'll give you that envelope to put in your offering. If you're ready, lift it up. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much because you are a generous lover. And we come to you this morning to express our love to you through our giving. Because love begets love. May you accept our giving this morning as a sign of our love to you. Bless every giver. Bless every tither. In those that have a heart that wants to give but they have nothing, let this be a week of a generous miracle in finances. Finances coming on their phones. Unexpected finances from people that love them, even from haters. 
we declare this over their lives of God in the name of Jesus and we all say amen amen, amen. let us march forward and give to the Lord in the name of Jesus praise him praise him we praise him in the morning we praise him in the no time praise him we praise him we praise him when the sun Lord, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the countenance of the Lord shine upon you. May God give you a revelation of how high and how deep, how long and how wide his love is for you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Give God a mighty hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I will see you again soon.